in with with the the um, uh, the vision of the character. Because right. you can do a lot, you know. And there's some of the things that are very subtle in terms of fabric patterns and color, and some are obvious. But but there are many things you can do to alter um, the 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 actor as they are just standing in front of you. Right, right. Um, I'm gonna toss in a bonus question, <laughs> if you can, uh, <laughs> just for free, <laughs> and then we'll go to some questions from the audience. But I was wondering if you could uh, tell us some funny on-stage costume moments. <laughs> Just I one each. Just one each. <laughs> I Haven't I done that already? Haven't I done that already? <laughs> On stage, well, I just had one in, uh, I was doing a Houdini in Montreal at the Siegel Theater, and we had a lovely actress, Valerie Boyle, who is a trooper, and um, she, we had decided on a costume, and, uh, and in the dress rehearsal, okay, it was the first time she ever wore the costume, uh, she's playing this lovely Jewish mama, and um, halfway through the scene, as a musical, <laughs> her skirt falls off, <laughs> <laughs> and she's just in her pantyhose. And luckily, we're just like the crew, but uh, you know, she said okay, and she went off stage. And then, to my horror, I think it was first or second preview, I'm sitting at the exact moment to see that her skirts come unpopped, and we had a full audience, and it was just very interesting to see the other actors react to it and how to kind of, you know, fix that on stage. But I think at one moment, she actually sang, my skirt's falling off. So. <laughs> <laughs> I guess, uh, oh God. Um, this, is, this is kind of at, at the nexus point of, of footwear and costume and set all coming together uh, in, one, in one fabulous moment. Um, I was doing a production of Othello in Vancouver, and the stage flooring was a kind of a packed press board. Um, and it wasn't, um, wasn't like this, it was, it, was, it was packed layers. And painted brilliantly cobblestone and, and lacquered, and the light was fabulous on it, and, and we're all in our poncy clothes, and, um, um, uh, and boots, and, and, and of course you had to rubberize the boots, and there was a lot of sword play in it, and nobody had kind of really thought that this pressed material, what it was going to be like with lunging men <laughs> fighting, and so big gouts of the stage were being ripped up like, like horses in a field. And, and so this looked ugly now because, so they would, uh, every Monday they would go and rebuild it and re-lacquer it. And the lacquer, of course, only had one day to dry, which meant it was sticky. And so as you walked with your boots, it was like sticking and it, <laughs> and it was sort of like, it is <laughs> the cause, <laughs> my soul. And, and so by Thursday, it had kind of settled down so it wasn't sticky anymore, but you knew Monday was coming. <laughs> I can only tell the story that's very sad. <laughs> <laughs> it was a da it's a dance story, and it was at the um, Palais Garnier, the most beautiful theater in the world in Paris. And it was a debut for me, and it was a debut for uh, James Kidelka, and it was his piece, and it was a piece we had done here, and it was. Um, uh, called Musings, and it was going to Paris to be, a, it was a big deal. And uh, it, <laughs> the principal dancer here was Karen Kane, and, and it had been set on her. And the uh, prima ballerinas in, at, the, at the Paris Opera Ballet are, are a lot shorter. Uh, and they also have a different, completely different attitude. They are called les étoiles, and boy, they mean it. <laughs> so even though I was coming from Canada to do fittings, I would often arrive there and it would say, no, she's not feeling well, so no fittings today. Anyway, the prima, their prima ballerina, their prima étoile was playing the lead, and um, so we're there opening night, and you know, there's so much press, and and 
she's in her beautiful red dress, and the dresses were quite long. But the, the girls decided they loved the dresses. They were evening dresses, so they didn't have to do a lot of dress rehearsals in them because they fit so well and they would look great. Um, and I'm watching this piece, and I see there was a, a sort of a black tulle over top of a red silk, and I see around the hip, the tulle is starting to pull away. <laughs> From the, from the dress, and gradually it's drifting down. <laughs> and it started to wrap itself around her point shoes, and she sees oh. the point, and she's the prima ballerina of the company, and it's kind of going, and I'm just like this. Oh my God, and you know that everyone in the audience by this point is mesmerized <laughs> by, the, <laughs> by the tool around her foot. And I'm thinking, this, I know this part's going to end. I know they carry her off soon. And yes, it came. They carried her off. And backstage, they had about 30 seconds. They cut it all off. And she came back on only with half the dress, but that was okay. And finished it. It was, it was the worst evening of my life at that point. And then I had to go to the cast party because the cast party was at the place where I was staying. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, I can't face this woman. I mean, I just can't. I was so mad. What happened is that the, her partner had stepped on it in a back bend, and it was a long dress. He'd stepped on the tool. Anyway, I was so mad at him. Anyway, and she, we were at the cast party, and I, I thought, I've got to face her. I've got to go up, and I've got to say something to her. And, anyway, so it, and she said, and she spoke in English, she was speaking, she said, Oh, I did, I, there was nothing. I was quite aware of what was happening. It was nothing. Much worse things have happened to me, like my wig got caught in my partner's buttons. <laughs> <laughs> but it was sad nonetheless. <laughs> Great. So thanks very much. And that's uh, the prepared part of the evening, as it were. And then what we'll do now is uh, I'll get this microphone and carry it around. And if there's any questions of members of the audience. You mentioned yeah. the quick change artist. I was wondering if you could tell us something of the, the techniques that are involved in this. I've seen people go off stage and go back on so quickly. I wonder how it's done. Oh, oh. you're talking to the right people. There's a magical <laughs> material called Velcro. <laughs> And Astrid and I uh, do a show here called Video Cabaret, where we have uh, seven actors and they play six characters each, and all the quick, all the costumes are quick changed, and they're done in like ten second quick changes. Yeah, yeah. wigs included, and um, so it depends on how it's built. I think that's the magical thing, and as and I've used everything from Velcro to magnets to snaps. Mm -hmm. Um, I think, you know, it, de it really depends on your timing and what the action is, if the actor can leave the stage or if they have to stay on stage, but Velcro, Velcro, Velcro. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's funny because that's true and yet when we were doing intimate apparel, because of the space we were in, we couldn't use Velcro. Because of the noise? Because, because of the noise yeah. and we were so close and <laughs> she's, and, and it's corsets, right? And, and um, Mostly as an actor going through a uh, quick change is uh, you go there and you just kind of stand there and do what you're told. And you work out, you know, whatever the, and there's, the, you, you'll develop a, a, a pattern of where it's to go. Um, and it's always horrific at the beginning. And then about three weeks in, it's like, oh, gee, I've got enough time for a smoke, you know? <laughs> um, because you do. You just get really so efficient and, and so clean with it. Um, as a director with a quick change and you're in previews or in tech dress or whatever, you, you find yourself saying, all right, can we take it back and do that again, please? And then there's like 20 minutes while they reset everything and then they go and do it again. Um, it's... You have to spend as much time, really, on a on a decent quick change as you do on a scene that you've rehearsed. It's it's um, I don't know choreography. Choreography, absolutely. Yeah. And practice. <laughs> and practice. Yeah. 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 And also the technicians, you know, as as a technician, as a, a stitcher, or it, that's something also that there's so many different techniques now for making things quick uh, that it is again trusting your technician to say, oh, you know what, I used magnets on that costume when we did that, or we used Velcro, or we did the snaps opposite to each other, and that worked great. So it's about also trusting the people that build the costumes. Yeah. 
I'm working with your actor because your actor will say, well, I think I can get it done this way or I think I can do this or I only have time to do this too. Yeah, I also have to say there's, there's a few theaters in this country that can actually afford to hire dressers to help you with this stuff, <laughs> right? Um, a, lot of, um, a lot of indie theaters, I, don't, I still don't know how we do it. Um, because it, you don't, you don't have. I mean, you know, I've got the luxury of having somebody whose job it is to change an actor backstage. Um, so it's it's uh, catch as catch can, and somehow it works. <laughs> Any other? No, insights? I think no? that's been covered. Yeah. <laughs> I'm covered. I'm covered. Hi, um, I just have a, a short funny story about quick changes. Um, early on in my uh, career, I was working for the DeRose Dance Theater, and it may have even been a show that you designed, <gasps> I can't remember. <laughs> but uh, anyways, there was this quick change that happened on stage as a, um, so like a hospital divider was rolled across, and he appeared uh, white, and then appeared red as the thing passed. So during the fitting, I had, we had to make sure that the Velcro was all working, very thin strips of Velcro sewn to all the seams. Now, DeRose Dance Theatre at the time, they didn't have a costume shop. It was in the, the rehearsal hall. Picture it well lit inside, very dark outside, <laughs> during rush hour, with no curtains. <laughs> and I said to Robert, do you want to put something on over that dance belt for this quick chain, you know, so, you know, he said, no, no, it's fine. <laughs> so for half an hour, I would hold here, he would hold there, and one, two, three, rip trying to get this, you know, the fastest removal of this costume. And I kept on thinking, I could just imagine all those commuters on the way home saying, honey, you wouldn't believe what I saw. <laughs> <laughs> this naked man with his, his clothes being ripped off, and he was naked because he was wearing a dance belt, which is like a, a man's thong. And so, and, and all you could see was from, from behind. But uh, that was... I a, remember that show. I <laughs> <laughs> had a huge, speaking of fabric, had a huge backdrop with a knife that came down and ripped the, uh, the, the fabric on a diagonal yeah. as part of the piece. Yeah. Yeah, I can't remember so that, I remember, I remember that one of his shows the had a, um, a big silk backdrop and it was mm -hmm. two male dancers and a female dancer and they were all, it was like this love triangle. And at the end this woman throws up her arms like a, uh, oh, sorry, <laughs> and, and just grabs the fabric and, and yanks it down, it down and it's all 